Gen AI has actually got a lot of potential. It is more human-like than anything we have ever innovated on in the history of humankind. Welcome to AI Factor, coming to you from the NASDAQ market site. Today we're sitting down with Chet Kapoor, CEO of DataStax, to explore how companies are building out their generative AI capabilities. Thanks for being here, Chet. Thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to this. So as the AI hype kind of moderates a little bit, how have you seen companies' expectations about the potential of AI and the speed of AI kind of evolve? So this is um, a little bit of background. This is my fifth technology wave. So I've, uh, I've been through client server, the web, mobile, cloud, and now Gen AI. This, is, this has happened before. We, something happens and we think it's gonna change the world like yesterday and a, and a big thing is gonna happen and people anticipate that it'll happen like right away. And um, it doesn't because it takes, it takes a while. Remember that it takes three things. It takes technology, people, and process to bring something together. And so people and process take longer than technology generally. So I think what Gen AI has actually got a lot of potential. The reason why it'll go faster than anything else is because it builds on the waves before and it's more human-like than anything we have ever innovated on in the history of humankind. And so it's gonna go really quick, but still not tomorrow. So I think what's happening is a lot of people have done experiments. I call it, I, I call the phase we're in, the Angry Birds part of Gen AI. This is like, you know, when, when the iPhone came out, the big app was Angry Birds. Now, was Angry Birds useful? Yeah. But you know, what was more useful was retail banking and shopping and this and that, and so much more, like you can go to school on it, right? And so that part is yet to come. Right, so we're still in kind of the fun, experimental phase, but the more productive and maybe more focused stuff will come later. I, we call this in January, we said this year was gonna be the year of production AI. And a lot of people said, really? We said, yeah, every one of our customers is going to put something into production this year on generative AI, either externally or internally. It might be a small app, but it'll happen. The real fun is going to be next year. We call it the year of transformative AI. That's when people start doing things that just goes from efficiency to effectiveness and then changes their entire business model. Zooming in to data stacks, how are you guys helping companies leverage real-time data to build out these AI capabilities? From an AI perspective, there is no AI without data. There is no AI without unstructured data. Uh, and there's no AI without unstructured data at scale. We are the unstructured data at scale. We power the largest apps in the universe from an from a unstructured data point of view. Right? You can think about any large app, and it actually is powered by technology that we've contributed to in a massive way. Um, so we help our customers in two ways. One is you need to make sure you modernize your data estate. And so if you don't modernize it, you will not get the context. LLMs are really good, but they give you content. The context, the information about you, the information about me sits in the databases that we have. And so how do you modernize to make that a more personalized experience rather than just make it about what the web has, right? So that's one. And then the second thing is, Building these Gen AI apps, it's a little bit of the wild, wild west, right? A lot of, there are lots of different ways of doing it, but there's no clear, opinionated way which is based on open source that people are doing. So we're bringing that to our customers. So how we contribute is twofold. One is we are making sure that customers are modernizing their data so that they can actually build Gen AI apps, and then we're actually giving them all the tooling and the framework to go off and make it happen. So you mentioned those tools. How has that kind of changed given that there are now more AI native companies and how are your offerings different maybe for companies that were born into this AI world versus those that are getting into it after years of doing other stuff? The AI natives get AI intuitively. They're building their companies, their apps and things like that on it. They know exactly how to bring the different pieces together and I'm not talking about open AI and Google. I'm talking about the people you know, starting companies in garages. Right, and the new sales forces of the world, if I may. Right, those people know how to go off and make it happen, and they're going off and doing it. But the real fun, the real, the real opportunity is not just those companies. The real opportunity is how do you make sure that 30 million developers who are developing technology all over the world can actually use tools to build Gen AI apps? Because 
We talk about Gen AI apps today. Just, just think about, we talked about mobile apps 15 years ago. Do you talk about mobile apps now? You just talk about apps. And by the way, the same thing is gonna happen with Gen AI apps. So our focus is to not just, not just focus on AI native folks, but to actually focus on people who are not AI native and make it easier for them to deliver the apps. In October, Datastax unveiled its Datastax AI platform built using NVIDIA AI, yeah. um, which promises to cut the cost of, or the time of production of AI by 60%. Can you walk me through yeah. how that happens? We are super excited about NVIDIA. Ultimately, we have three tenants to our AI strategy. How do you create agility for developers? How do you make sure that it is cost effective? And how do you make sure that it can scale? Those are the three things. So everything that we do is around those three vectors. Um, we went and spent some time, we've been actually partnering with NVIDIA for over a year, and uh, got a chance to go and spend some time with their executives and with Jensen, and really got to know Nemo really well. And they have put a lot of effort in creating Nemo, which is their, which is their AI platform. Um, and we are very fond of the way they've actually made it happen. The specific two or three things that we really like we like what they're doing with what we call guardrails because AI can be dangerous, right? And so how do you make sure that you can actually create the guardrails so that AI doesn't get out of where it should be? The second thing is how do you make blueprints? How do you make it easier to do things? How do you curate things? So we've, we've taken a bunch of the different technologies, but all three, it's all around the three buckets. How do you create agility for developers? How do you make sure that things are done in a way that they are cost effective, and the last thing is how do you scale them? What does that kind of massive partnership with you know, one of the most valuable companies in the world mean for you guys at Datastax? At the end of the day, um, we care about two things. Just two things. We care about building products that developers love, that change the trajectory of the enterprises that they work for. NVIDIA helps us with both. Do you have any concerns about the pace of AI outpacing what you're able to provide to your customers? Um, no, generally, and hesitating. The reason, um, the last four, and I was very actively involved in the, in the web and mobile and cloud, the last four, I didn't have to, I would have said no. And the reason why I slowed down is because I think AI is more human-like. And what's gonna happen is, you know, governments are going to be a little bit more involved earlier on. And I would actually recommend it. Generally, I'm not for it because my take is, you know, don't stifle innovation, right? Just go and do it as fast as you can. You'll be able to solve problems. Like, think about this really simply. 15 years ago, we were not cashing checks on the web, right? Because everybody, it's not secure, it's not going to work. And now, you don't even know where it's getting cashed, right? But the check just clears. And so, the same thing's going to happen with Gen AI. But I think governments will have to be a little bit more involved and we will need to think about governance from a, from a country perspective, from an industry perspective, from a company perspective. And so in doing all of that, um, we may slow down things a little bit, but we'll be slowing it down to speed it up. So am I worried about um, AI outpacing things? No, because, so that's one perspective. The second one is, I never think about AI versus humans, ever. That's not something that comes in my mind. I think it's about, it's about humans versus humans with AI. And that's going to be a problem that a lot of people are going to face if they resist the change. Right, that kind of question about job security and AI replacing people, you think it's more going to be the people that are able to use AI well and to embrace it are gonna be the ones that get out ahead. If you think about steam, you think about electricity, do you think about all those things that have happened to us beyond just you know, tech over the last 30 years, everything has had some job replacement. And, it, and I think it'll happen here as well, right? We think about companies in their Gen AI journey, we think about they start by first by delegation and say, you know what, I'm gonna reduce costs. And the way they reduce costs is by saying, I, I need less people because the human with AI is as effective as two humans. So I think that will happen. There's no way to escape it. That happens with every technology. Think about retail, retail banking. There were so many branches, there are not that many anymore because you are using your phone to actually make things happen. So 
I think that will happen, but I think very quickly people will realize that it's not about cost cutting. It's about being more, not about being more efficient, it's about being more effective. And that's when the transformative AI that I talked about earlier will start showing up. Thank you so much for being here, Chad. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks for watching. I'm Rocio Fabro for Quartz. Stick with QZ.com for more.